Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. Today we're going to take a look at film cameras and what we suggest if you're looking to buy a film camera and kind of some ideas which ones you should get and applications, right? Yeah, I mean the great thing about film is there are so many different cameras at so many different price points that do so many different things in so many different formats. You have a lot of choices, but the downside is that sometimes you don't really know where to start if you're not into it. Yeah, if you're not, sh if you're not sure, if you've never shot film, you're going to have a, that's a pretty confusing thing yeah. to get going on. So here's a couple of suggestions. So my number one camera, we'll go back and forth. My number one favorite camera in the world is the Hasselblad. It's a great camera. Yes, it is. It's a 500CM. These run about 1000 for this whole setup to $1,400. Mm -hmm. Fabulous for doing weddings. Fabulous for not exactly a... It's not a fast camera. No, not a fast camera. It has no meter. So the, the downside of this camera is there's no meter. You've got a viewfinder you got to look into the top of. So if you get it up high, it's hard to get in there and look. But the upside is beautiful, sharp beautiful images, images on that yeah. uh, Zeiss lens. You've got an interchangeable back on the back. So it's you can medium it format. So medium very format, clean. Very clean. So you got that large 120, that medium format. You get uh, 12, roll, 12 shots on a roll. The thing I love about Hasselblad is the square image. It's so unique. I love it. So there's no horizontal, there's no vertical, they're just square. Um, I'll start in with a budget option for my number one camera. This is a great starter camera if you're getting into film but you're not sure you want to invest too much. It's a Canon AT1. The more common version is the AE1. They both run about $200. Um, it does have a meter, it takes a battery, it has basically anything you need in a basic film camera. It shoots 35 millimeter. Great starter point. The great thing about Canon uh, FD lenses is they're all super cheap. You could get a full set of lenses for just like a thousand dollars. Wow, that'd be great. Yeah. So it's easy to pick up a lens yeah. and it has a couple of lenses that with it. That might be a little bit of an exaggeration. The, the thing about it, the the advantage is the cost. So the Hasselblad is going to run you, you know, twenty thirty dollars to develop twelve images. This is going to run you twenty thirty dollars to develop thirty six images. Much different. So. All right, my number two camera is. I just think it's so vintage, to this old twin lens reflex. You're looking down here, you're focusing, one lens to be able to look through, one lens to take the picture. I think these are, are fabulous. I love them. And you get, again, it's, it's 120 film, so you're getting a 120 image. These are run about $400, $500. Really? Well, these, I saw them lower into $200 range yeah. on eBay. So, but if you Super want just a experience. really, this is really a vintage experience. Again, medium format camera, you're going to get about 12 Exposures per roll. Yep. And it's all, there's no meter, so be prepared. No meter. Yep. But really fun. All right, uh, my next choice would be, I don't have it with me, but the Canon F1. So the Canon F1 is a step up from this. Canon F1 is like a real professional grade camera still. All the same, you know, you can get one that's full mechanical without a meter, or you can get one that's electronic with a meter. Um, the F1 is what a lot of photographers used in like the 60s and 70s if they're going to like Antarctica or something like that because it's mechanical and you don't need a battery and you can just shoot it whenever but it's also still lightweight you can get winders for it so it goes really fast it's you're gonna get that for around 300 or 350 if you want to go for something a little more robust than this all right I seem to be leaning towards the vintage cameras my favorite camera ever made bar none is a speed graphic I just I think the speed graphic is the coolest camera ever made you see any film from the 50s, 60s, everybody shot new stuff on speed graphics. It's a 4x5 camera. You shoot 4x5 negative film, or, well, you shoot 4x5 film in this thing. So you got the big film backs that go in the back. It collapses, don't take me too long to do it, collapses into just a little box here. But this is a great camera. I know several universities that I have spoken at that are still learning on this camera. Very they cool. buy them and they are very, they're workhorse cameras. They're great to carry around. That they're pretty four light. 5 negative too is amazing. Huge. You're going to get, in my opinion, you're going to get qual more quality out of your 4x5 negatives than any digital camera will ever be able to get. Oh, you. yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. A, that's an incredible image size, but it's pretty expensive. You're now costing you <laughs> $20 for one exposure. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're getting up there. Is it really $20 oh, for yeah. an exposure? Yeah. So when you calculate the film and the processing? Oh yeah, when you calculate the film, it's gonna be like $23 oh, for exposure. <laughs> well, I haven't yeah. shot this in a long time. I actually have four of them. I just love the speed graphics. I think they're the greatest camera ever. They're just the <laughs> coolest looking camera. All right, my next uh, recommendation is the Pentax 645N2. So this is the last uh, medium format digital camera that Pentax made before they moved to digital. This was uh, started manufacturing, I think, 2001. 
And the great thing about it is very shootable, very friendly for people that are used to shooting digital. Um, you have all the bells and whistles on this. You can choose spot metering, evaluative metering, spot focus. So you uh, got a meter focus. in that, unlike my yeah. speed oh, graphic, which has <laughs> nothing. <right. Yeah. laughs> it takes, takes a picture. Um, this shoots three frames per second. You have exposure compensation. You can go, it's like all the bells and whistles. It's a great camera. Want. It's a great camera. Very good for shooting like weddings and events. I would say this is the best wedding or event film camera that's on the market right now, just because it's so fast. Uh, the one downside is you don't have removable backs. So, so the whole back come out slower, yeah. yeah. It's, you have to pull it out and load. You can't swap out black and white and color at will. You have to shoot through a whole roll and then Which is the advantage out. of the Hasselblad. You but can have a back sure. for color, a back for, for sure. black and white. Um, but other than that, great camera. The lenses are really nice. And this whole thing's gonna run you about $1,000. It shoots a six centimeter by four and a half centimeter image. So you're so going to you get vertical four, or 14. Yeah, it's vertical and horizontal. You're going to get 14 images per roll. Well, I'm going to step up to the camera that I shot everything that's in my book called the slanted lens. I mean, I shot four by five forever. This is a Cinar F camera, which is their basic bottom of the line. Cinar was the, the king of four by five view cameras in the 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, 90s. I mean, it was really the master, the P. And the, I can't remember the name now, P or P2? Mm -hmm. P2, yeah. P2 was like a $4,000, you know, 4x5 four yeah. view camera. This is much cheaper than that. You can buy these now, just the body, for three or $400, then a lens, you know, even less for the body. Uh, so you can get into this setup here for... I don't know, five or six hundred dollars, maybe eight at the most. I love these. I love these for portrait. Uh, if really... you have the time, you have the setting. I just love using them for portrait. You get the the lenses are awesome. You get the nicest bokeh in the background from the the four x five, and it really just makes you slow down and work <laughs> for your image, which is a great thing in a world where it's just like click 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 click. You know, adjust adjust click click click. The back and the back flips up vertical or horizontal, so you can go either way. And it's easy, you know, it's not considered a field camera as in you can haul it up on top of a mountain. It was a little right. heavy for that. There are some more 4x5s that close Adams in. would do it. Yeah, he probably would. <laughs> He'd probably take an 8x10 up there. So there you go, the Cinar F. All right, so my next recommendation is not with us. It's the Pentax 6.7. So the 6.7 is uh, a little similar to this, but it's much older, so it doesn't have the bells and whistles. Um, it has a really cool wooden handle. That's probably my favorite part about it. No, just kidding. It looks cool. The thing I like about the 6.7 is it's got its very large exposure. So you're larger than the Hasselblad because you're a little bit wider. So you're doing 10 frames on a roll. You're doing That's 10 right. frames That's right. So this is like roll. the RB or the RZ. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you do have a horizontal or a vertical, but it's just a massive negative. But it's not quite the hassle that like a 4x5 is. I like it because it's that it's like as big as you can get with your negative before you have to like really jump into this. It's a massive camera actually yeah it, it is really big it's like a big the, whale so the downside to, the downside to the uh pentax 67 is the weight and the size and the the limit of exposures and it's m much more mechanical it doesn't have all the electronics and stuff so it's not a speed camera but really great for beautiful imagery in the day of film though compared to a Hasselblad when you went to the the rb or the rz you just got this almost a, it's a three by four almost yeah. and so it's just yeah. a, a really big negative in a compact, compact. It's relatively a, compact. Yeah, relatively you could travel compact with body. It. You could travel mm -hmm. with it, and in some ways, it's flat. It's a little bit flatter than this, which is nice. Yep. But um, yeah, the, those are going to run you around a thousand dollars too. Okay, my next one here is the Nikon. This is the F3, and I shot a million things on the F3. This is a great film camera, and this is an excellent camera to carry. The nice thing about on. these old Nikon film cameras is you can use your same lenses. So yes. if you're shooting Nikon right now. Go buy a Nikon body for 300 bucks, and you can use all your lenses. You're in, it's great. You're on the go. It's, you're right. It's fabulous that way. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's excellent. So this is like Nikon's equivalent of the Canon F1. Yes. They're like the same. Yeah, very yep. similar. Similar world, but uh, better. So. <laughs> My last recommendation is a Leica. So I love rangefinders. Leave and the Ferrari for last. <laughs> The sad part about digital photography is there are no digital rangefinders except Leicas, Leicas. which cost three, four, five, eight thousand dollars. Yeah. So this is a Leica M2. People consider this to be the classic, the most classic Leica. It wasn't their first one. The M3 was their first one. 
but the M3 didn't have any uh, frame lines for 35 millimeter. It was 50 millimeter or tighter. So this has uh, 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, and 90 millimeter frame lines. It's a range finder, so you're not seeing through the lens, which means you have to use a little prism to make sure you're focused. It's a really different way of working, but I personally love it. I love the fact that you have frame lines because you can actually see what's going on outside of your frame. So you can anticipate things a lot better. It's very quiet. So between those two things, it's really good for street photography. The body alone for like a, a good one that's that you can count on, probably gonna be about a thousand dollars unless you get lucky. Still a thousand dollars. And then I bought like a cheap knockoff lens. I bought a Voigtlander knocked on 1.5. So it only cost me four or five four fifty. But a Leica 50 millimeter lens is gonna cost you minimum. $600 for like a 2.8. If you want to get like an, an actual nice Leica lens, it's like a Summicron or something, you're looking at $1,600 to $3,000. So not for the faint of heart. If you're gonna, if you want to get into film at a cheap price point where you can still shoot lots of exposures and not spend a lot of money, um, 35 millimeter cameras are great to look at. Maybe not necessarily the Leica, but I mean Nikon and Canon both have great budget offerings. Yeah, and if you look around, your your grandma has one of these in her house. Yeah, that's I'm probably right true now. too. We're going <laughs> yeah. to the thrift store. Yeah, yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah. So, so a great entry point. Those walk around cameras to shoot thirty five. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think when you step up into weddings, I think you're better off into the Hasselblad or into the six four five. I would say most most professional applications these days, you'd want to shoot medium format, mm -hmm. uh, unless you're really looking for a gritty feel. But yeah, I I love the Pentax for its kind of auto capabilities, I guess, but I really love the Hasselblad just for the lenses and for the square format. Although if I was shooting weddings and I was a hybrid shooter, I would probably shoot digital, obviously, hybrid shooter, obviously. and I would just hang a, a 35 on my on my hip and I would just click off a couple of shots every so yeah. often and you would get some pretty interesting things in that. It yeah. feels very candid, very interesting. So there'd be an application there That's for true. sure. But if you really want to get into like Great, serious, serious film serious. photography. Yeah, <laughs> and great scenics, great, you know, very staged portraits. The 4x5 can't be beat. It's just a beautiful, yeah. beautiful look, and I think it's it's worth stepping into it and playing with. So we need to do that. We need to do some 4x5 portraits here on the Slanted Lens. So uh, post your photos on our Facebook group and tell us what you're using. Tell us what cameras you like, and keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking. April giveaway is an international giveaway, finally! Black Rabbit's giving away four of their retro straps. One of them goes to somebody international. So get over to thuslandlens.com to sign up to win or watch the YouTube video. That's another way to enter or leave a comment at the end of the YouTube video. That's another way to enter. You can follow us or Black Rapid on Instagram. You can like us on Facebook. So get out there and sign up so you can win today. Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. And we're going to review this new camera that just came out. It's the Aricon uh, M74B12. This thing's going to be all the rage in 1920. I'm telling you, you're going to know everything that's happened before and after in the world of cameras. Before and after. So subscribe to the Slant Lens. Subscribe and see what's coming up. And went.